you're new to color grading, DaVinci Resolve is without a doubt the best place to start. It's quickly become the industry standard for Hollywood films and high-end video production, but you don't need to be a pro to get great results. That's why in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my simple five-step workflow that instantly makes your videos look more professional. You gotta just press record. Hey, welcome back to Think Media, Nate here. Now, before we dive in, let's be clear on the difference between color correction and color grading because people often confuse the two. Color correction is about fixing problems like exposure, white balance. That way we have a nice neutral looking image that is accurate. Color grading on the other hand is where you add style and give your video a specific mood and feel. I think color correction is something that everyone should do on their videos, but color grading is more of a stylistic choice. But we'll cover both in this video, starting off with color correction. So before we start color correcting our video, we want to head over to the color page right here, which is this icon. And here we have our viewer, we have our color wheels, as well as a bunch of tools. We want to enable our waveforms, and I'm gonna change this to waveform right here. This is gonna come helpful a little bit later. And up on the top right is our node tree. Instead of using layers like most editing programs, Resolve uses nodes. Think of nodes kind of like a chain of steps. You can set up a node for just your exposure settings, one for white balance, and another for your creative look. Put them in order and together they help build your final look. So to get started, we're going to apply a few different nodes by right clicking here, add node, add serial, and click that once. You can also do the same thing by holding down Option S, and I'm just gonna do a total of five for now. Let's head over to this first one, and we're going to rename this. Again, I'm just gonna go down to Node Label, and we'll do Exposure. Now I'm just gonna quickly rename the rest of these nodes, that way we can get started. Now it's important to know what kind of footage you are working with. For example, on my timeline, I have two different clips. One is shot in a standard Rec 709. It looks pretty contrasty and well saturated. It looks pretty decent already. The other is shot in log, which is this really flat, really ugly looking video footage. But this has some benefits of having extra flexibility when it comes to color grading. But because this is shot in log, it actually requires us to do one extra step, and that is to bring the log footage into a standard Rec 709 color space before color grading. We'll get into how to do that later on in the video, but just know that this log needs that conversion step. And that brings us to the first step in color correction, and that is adjusting our exposure. Simply put, we don't want our footage too bright or too dark. We want it just right. If your footage is too bright, you want to compensate by reducing the exposure. And in Resolve, the simplest way to do that is by using these color wheels. Now I know this can be a touch confusing, especially if you're just beginning, but we have four different wheels to choose from, lift, gamma, gain, and offset. Think of this as shadows, midtones, highlights, and an overall adjustment of exposure. So for this particular shot here, it is maybe a touch bright, so we want to reduce the exposure. So I can go over to this offset, and down here on this wheel, we'll just click and slide to the left, and this number will go down and we are actually reducing exposure. Now, obviously we don't wanna to go too far as it starts to look really bad, but we wanna find a happy medium where it's not too bright and it's not too dark. So maybe just a subtle adjustment around 24. That actually looks pretty good. You also have more control by just independently adjusting the highlights, the midtones, as well as the shadows. And that anytime you want to reset any one of these, you can click up here on this undo and that will reset it. So I like where we're at right now with this offset. Just doing that one simple tweak got us in the right exposure. If you're having difficulty judging by eye how bright or dark things need to be, a really helpful tool is this waveform scopes. If you don't see this, you want to head up to workspace, go down to video scopes and just turn that on and I'm set to the waveform right here. So what this does is zero represents black, absolutely black, our darkest part of our image. And up here on this 1023 is the brightest part of our image. And from left to right actually matches our screen's image from left to right. So you can kind of see right in the middle is where my exposure is. So we just don't wanna be where I am like clearly clipping, right? You can see that it doesn't look good in the viewer and we can see that we are losing detail right up there. So that is super helpful for us knowing where things should generally be. 
you'll actually notice here in this top right corner that we're actually losing some detail and that is actually corresponding with this lamp right up here. We're actually losing a little bit of information, but that is supposed to be the brightest part of the image. So I don't necessarily worry that it is super bright. You just wanna make sure that your skin tones aren't obviously being lost way up there. Having proper exposure is fundamental to any color grade. So just spending a little extra time here to make sure that your footage is properly exposed is gonna make a huge difference on how our final video looks. Which brings us to step number two. If you notice your colors just don't look quite right, maybe it's too warm or too cool, this is actually a white balance issue. And one of the simplest ways to instantly get more natural looking colors is to make sure that our white balance is proper. So let's go over to our white balance node. And then over here, I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool. Click on that and then head up to the viewer and we want to select something within our camera frame that is bright and white, very neutral color. So for example, I happen to be wearing a white shirt, so I can click on that and you may not notice a huge difference, but down here it has adjusted our color temperature as well as our tint. This usually gets you in the ballpark for having more accurate colors, but if you want even better results, I recommend buying this gray card you hold this up in your camera frame, you can take a white balance reading right here and that'll give you even more accurate colors. So for example, I did that for this shot right here where I held it up. I'm gonna reach for that eyedropper tool and just select it on the gray card. And as you can see, this is a pretty big difference. Our color temperature is now at 500, which warmed up the image and our tint is now at 13, which added a little bit more magenta within our camera frame. And I think this is looking great. Of course, you can still manually tweak your white balance settings by just going down here. And by going to the left, it's cooling it off and going to the right will warm it up even further. I actually feel like maybe I wanna cool it off just a touch, maybe around 400. And I think this is looking really great. Now that our exposure and white balance are set, the next thing we want to do to make our image pop is adding in contrast. If you ever find your footage to look very flat, dull, or kind of just washed out, chances are you need to add a little bit more contrast. So to do this, we wanna make sure we're on our contrast node. And then right down here, we want to increase this if we want more contrast. And as you can see, parts of the image will get more saturated as well as the highlights are getting brighter and the shadows are getting deeper. So we don't wanna go overboard, obviously that looks terrible, but we also don't wanna go too flat where it just looks very washed out. For this shot in particular, it's already a pretty contrasty image, but maybe I want just a little bit more. If I enable and disable that, as you can see, it just adds a little bit of pop to our image. Now that the first three steps are dialed and the next step is saturation. So this is where we can really make our colors look very vibrant. So let's click on our saturation tool right here. And then right down here, we can increase this and I'll make our image very, very vibrant again. It's very easy to go overboard with saturation, but you could also reduce saturation if you want to have a black and white shot. For this particular shot, a small adjustment goes a long way with the RGB lighting, so I'm probably just gonna leave it around 52. The key thing here is always keeping an eye on people's skin tones. It's the first place where people notice if the saturation looks off. So again, don't go too saturated, don't go unsaturated, just right. At this point, we've covered the four steps of color correction, exposure, white balance, contrast, and saturation. And honestly, this footage is looking pretty good. It's very clean, natural, professional. It's just a very neutral look. You could totally stop right here and have a finished video that is ready to go. But if you wanna take things a little bit further and give your project a unique style and mood, that's where color grading comes in. Now, before we jump into LUTs and creative looks, you know, color grading is a very fun part of the editing room, but there's a lot of tedious parts of editing as well that you wish you could just skip over. Things like cutting down and removing bad takes from your talking head video. If you spend so much time doing the tedious stuff, you don't have any more energy for this fun stuff like color grading. That's why I use this tool called Gling, which is today's sponsor. And this tool is so fantastic at automatically removing silences, filler words, and bad takes. And it gives you a clean rough cut of your video within minutes. And instead of scrubbing through hours of footage, you can kind of edit your video like a Word document. Just highlight the text you wanna remove, press delete, and it does the editing for you. Then once you're done editing your video, you can export it out to Resolve and have all your cuts in place 
ready for color grading. In fact, I like to export my video as a multi-cam sequence. So when I open that in Resolve, all I gotta do is just color grade this one file. I don't have to copy or paste all my different color grades. I use this tool on every video that I make here at Think Media, and it easily saves me hours on every project. So if you wanna try it for free, click the link in the description down below and see how much time Gling AI can save you. So we're gonna talk about color grading in just a second, but first let's talk about how we do this color correction process within Log. Because there is one additional step we need to bring our flat image into a standard Rec. 79 space before we start our color grading. And there are two ways that we can do this. Number one is applying a color space transform, and the other is applying a technical LUT. I'm gonna first show you how to do a color space transform. So what we're gonna do is add in another node and we're gonna label this CST for the color space transform. Next, we're gonna move up to effects and type in color space transform. And here we're going to select our camera's input color space. So this is all dependent on what camera you use. For example, I'm using the Sony A7S III and I shot an S log three. So we're gonna scroll down all the way till we can find Sony S gamut 3 dot Cine. click on that. And then our input gamma, which for my camera is S log three. And you can see how it's applied some changes over here on the left, but let's go over to the output color space. And we're gonna change this to rec 709 and our output gamma set to 2.4. If we take a look at our video over here, it's starting to look a little bit more natural. If I disable our color space transform, this is before and this is after. It's a pretty huge difference now that we've converted our log video to a Rec. 709 space. Now, the second way to do this is with a technical LUT. So let me disable this node, add in a new one, and I'll just label this LUT for now. Then you want to right click on that node go down to LUT, and then I'm just going to choose the camera manufacturer's technical LUT right here. Let's click on that. And as you can see, we have a pretty similar result between these two methods. If you had to choose between the two, the color space transform is probably a little higher quality, gives you more room to work with and more customization. And while a technical LUT is simpler and easier to use, you may not have the same level of quality. But regardless of which option you use, it's really important on the order of where you do this color space transform. And that is after your color correction and before your creative look. When you do it that way, you can fix your color and exposure settings while your image still has all of its detail. If you don't do this, your image will start to fall apart. So make sure that the order of your notes is correct. Now that our footage is color corrected, we got our exposure, white balance, and contrast all in check. It's now time for the fun part, color grading. This is where we can give our video style and the most common ways for beginners to do this is by applying a LUT. But rather than a technical LUT like before with the log video, this is a creative LUT. To do this in Resolve, we have a node labeled creative LUT. So I'm just gonna click on that, go down to LUT, one of my favorite creative looks that DaVinci Resolve has built in is underneath film looks. Right here, it is this Fuji film D55, whatever. <laughs> I just click on that one. But as you can see, once we apply that, it is looking terrible. It's way overpowered. So we actually want to reduce the intensity of this LUT. So in order to dial it back, you wanna click on this node key right here and then go down to key output and start adjusting the gain way down. And this is kind of like reducing the opacity some. So a lot of times when I'm shooting in a standard profile, I might only do like 0.2, very low intensity. But if I enable this and disable this, it gives it just a little hint of a vibe to my video, makes the colors look a little bit more rich. After I apply my LUT, I'll often go back to my color correction nodes and tweak exposure and contrast so that way it's not overpowering. This gives you just enough of a look without pushing things too far. Now I just quickly wanna show you how I might apply a LUT when I am doing log. So I might increase the key output a little bit more since that log video can handle it. And then I'll go back to exposure and dial this back, maybe raise the mid-tone slightly. That way you bring more of the look of the LUT, but again, it's not too overpowered. And so if we enable and disable that, again, this is more of a neutral look, and then enabled, ooh, just bring some of that nice rich color back. Of course, feel free to dial in this creative look depending on your taste. So that is our color correction and color grading applied. Let's check out the before with this flat log image. It's looking gross. 
and then enable that, boom, we're just hit with so much color. What a big difference. So we've done a lot of work up to this point. And instead of repeating this whole process for every single clip, we can actually speed this up by simply copying and pasting our color grade onto other clips. For example, I have this clip that is also a log image. So I'm just gonna go over to the first one, click Command C, go over to this log, press Command V to paste, and boom, my color grade is now transferred. That instantly brings over your corrections and creative look without having to start from scratch. That being said, you still wanna go back and tweak some shots individually, some lighting or exposures. It's gonna be different from shot to shot, but copying and pasting this effect will get you about 80% there. And that's our finished video, fully graded with a few simple steps. And I think the before and after results speak for themselves. Now we just scratched the surface of DaVinci Resolve's color grading capabilities, but if you wanna learn more about the editing aspect of DaVinci Resolve, then be sure to check out this video on screen right here.